What is going on guys and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today we're going to be doing a much requested video, five things that I absolutely love about my Alfa Romeo Giulia. So before we get into the video, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe for more amazing videos like this one and more content with this Giulia. And uh, without further ado, let's get right into it. All right, so the first thing I love about the Giulia is the exterior styling. Now, whenever you look at this car, there's no denying that this is a striking piece of automotive design. From the way that the body lines flow into each other, to the striking paint colors, to the front V Scudetto calling back to Alfa Males of past, it's a beautiful, beautiful car and it really stands out in the segment. Um, unfortunately, it's a terrible rainy day today in central New York, as it always is. So I'll flash some uh, videos and some pictures on the screen of this car and its fullness so you can come to get an idea of just how beautiful um, this Julia as well as the other Julia models are um, and just how amazing they look really from the outside. It's a car that when you park it uh, and you start walking away you do a double take you turn back to look at it one more time because it's just that beautiful it is it's a piece of rolling art um, for what's you know a, a sedan that's under $25,000 I really can't think of too many other vehicles that look just as good as this one does um, especially in this alfa rosso i think it pops when the sun hits it and it really accents the uh the body lines and the sculpture that this car is so um again i do have a base model julia so that means that some of the front fascias will be different if you are to get the different higher model julias um, the ti sports and the quadrifoli models will have obviously more aggressive um, front bumper rear bumper side skirts and uh, even a diffuser so um, you're definitely going to get, even with the base model, a beautiful car, but the more you upgrade and uh, the more you, you want to play, let's say, with the Giulia, um, the, the even more striking and aggressive and beautiful this car becomes. All right, so let's get into thing number two that I love about the Giulia. And so sticking with the theme, the second thing I love about this Giulia is the interior of the car. So now, as you can see, it's a very stunning place to be inside the Julia. And again, I'll flash some more pictures on the screen of, um, of the interiors of the different Julias. But I mean, it, it's a truly unique and uh, incredible to look at interior. It's very sleek. Everything is seamlessly integrated and designed. Um, ergonomically, it works very well. And you get a nice leather wrapped steering wheel. You get leather seats. Now, again, these are just the base seats here. So you can opt for um, sportier and better bolstered seats if you get the TI or again, the Quadrifolio will up that to the, even the next level. But in all the Julias, you get a wonderful leather wrapped steering wheel. Um, the climate controls are really nice. The gauges and the infotainment cluster um, also super high resolution, very nice, clean, classic. Everything is very elegant, modern, and, uh, and very timelessly designed so that this car will age very well. And it still is very striking even, again, for a base model Julia. When you hop in it, it's, it's a unique and a special place to be. So um, that's definitely something that is a very high, high point in this car. All right, let's get on to the third thing I love about the Julia. All right, and so playing off of the second thing, third thing I love about the Julia is just the functionality and the cool gadgets and gizmos and really the attention to detail that Alpha has put into this car. So I'll give you a few examples of that. For one, the start stop button is not in your typical place. It's right here on the steering wheel, which is a hallmark of Ferraris and other sports cars. So again, it just makes this car feel a little more special having it there versus having it down in the center console or somewhere hidden over uh, on the side of the car there. So that's a nice little feature there. Another nice little attention to detail that Alpha has done is with the different drive modes here, we have the drive mode selector down there. If we change the mode, you get a nice cool little graphic on the screen. It's something small, um, and yet it's something that's just so cool, as you can see. And that also changes here in the dashboard, indicating um, what mode you are driving in. So I think that's a really, really great feature as well. Again, it's the little, little attention to details. So like, again, if you have the gear lever here and uh, you put it in the drive and you pop it over into manual, and you want to put it back in the park, but you don't put it back in the drive first. 
see that? It just, it slings it back into to place there. So it's it's little things like that, you know, having a, a button over here for your, for your stop start, um, which again, actually that's a system that works very well in this car. You can creep off the line really easily with the stop start system. It's not very intrusive, but if you do find it annoying, like I do, you can turn it off with a simple click of a button there. You have nice controls, cruise controls right here. Everything is just laid out really well. And the drive mode selector itself, I always thought was a really cool feature, how you can flick it into uh, any any drive mode that you want here. And it stays and you get that little graphic. And this, honestly, I've never felt a car change so much with the drive modes. And this is especially true if you get the quadrifolios where you'll get an additional race mode up here that will turn off traction and really make it feel alive. But this car with just simply flicking this switch into uh, into dynamic mode or all the way down here into A mode, you get a totally different beast of a vehicle. And um, this car is, is so dual personality and it's amazing that just flicking the little switch here, you know, one notch to the left, one notch up, uh, changes the dynamics of the car altogether so greatly. So this car just like, you know, the circle vents here are really cool, seamlessly integrated into the nice dashboard. Um, it, it's just, it's really the little things like that and the little details uh, inside this vehicle that really make it feel special, that stand it apart from its competitors and uh, and make this car definitely worthwhile. So that's gonna be it for thing number three. Let's get into the fourth thing that I love about the Giulia. All right, the fourth thing I love about the Alfa Romeo Giulia is the way that it drives. There's obviously no way I was gonna make a video about five things I love about this car and not include a clip of me driving it and telling you about just how good the driving experience is because that is honestly a hallmark uh, and probably the main reason why somebody would go out of their way to buy this car. Under the hood, you're looking at a two liter turbocharged four cylinder engine, produces just over 280 horsepower and uh, a scotch over 300 pound feet of torque. Um, that is mated to a ZF automatic eight-speed transmission, which pounds off shifts like nobody's business. And in this particular Julia model, we have the Q4 all-wheel drive system. So that means that this car is good for a zero to 60 in uh, just under five seconds and a top speed of around 160 miles an hour. So this car is no slouch in the performance category. Um, in straight line speed, it's really, really good. You obviously get a lot of performance from what it seems like a little bit of engine. Also, this car is relatively cheap. So for 25K, you're getting a lot of performance and styling and all that too. But focusing more on the actual driving experience, this has one of the best handling chassis that I've ever driven for the sports sedan segment. Uh, it's so neutral. The steering is so light yet so communicative. This is one of the purest steering racks uh, and the truest feeling um, sports sedan that I've driven. It, it gives you so much feedback. You can place the car exactly where you want it and the car itself feels alive. It's not numb. Um, it's super nimble and direct. Uh, even with this all-wheel drive system, you get virtually no understeer out of this car. And that means that the handling is, is very sports car-esque and it's super fun to drive this car even at slow speeds because you still get all of that feel and connection to the road even though you're not doing uh, VMAC. But you can in this car if you turn it up into dynamic mode, it holds on to those, to those gears and it gives you that throttle response and it's just a blast to drive. But I think most people that know about this car know that aspect of it. But one thing I'd like to focus on in this video particularly, another reason why I love the way this car drives uh, like it does, is just how easy it is to drive when you're not pushing it around or when the conditions aren't so nice. So let's say that on a day like today, it's really raining heavy or it's even snowing. Um, this car is super easy to drive on a daily basis and that communicates and translates well to uh, inclement weather as well. So if you're in a situation where conditions just aren't 100%, this car handles it superbly, especially with that all-wheel drive system. Now, I've driven this car, because I do live in central New York, many a time in rain heavier than this and snow. And I have to say, a lot of people don't talk about it because, 
you know, who's really buying an Alfa Romeo to drive it in the snow. However, if you are buying an Alfa as a daily driver and you do drive it in the snow, have no fear because this car is super capable in inclement weather, especially if you put it into one of the A modes or even a normal mode still. Um, it will crawl through the snow with, with relative ease. Now, ground clearance is slightly a bit of an issue when it comes to bigger buildups of snow. However, in most scenarios, just driving on the road in slushy or icy conditions, this car will treat you really well. The all-wheel drive system, coupled with that traction control system, make sure that the car stays exactly where it is. It's not sliding, it's not fishtailing on you, even though this is rear-wheel drive biased, you do get the benefits of an all-wheel drive system, which means that this car is super easy to drive, not only slow, but also very capable in the snow. And uh, a lot of people don't really talk about that. Um, you know, I, I'm, I drive on all season tires, I don't even have snow tires, and I've yet to slip once in this car in two years or driving it through two winters. Um, I really haven't had any issues with this car whatsoever. And then, with that being said, when you step on it, You get a lot of performance too and this car is no slouch around a corner or a straight line it's a total blast to drive um every every part the brakes feel great uh, the acceleration is good the steering and handling is the best in its class and honestly i will stand by the fact that i say that this car is the best driving sedan in its segment so um if, if there's no other reason why in this video that I convince you uh, to buy this car, it should be for the driving experience. If that should alone be enough uh, for you to, to desire this car. All right, so the fifth and final thing that I love about this Alfa Romeo Giulia has to be kind of the name and the cachet that comes with driving the car like this. Now, I know that kind of seems like a pompous thing to say, but... When you drive an Alfa Romeo, you're driving a piece of heritage, and this Giulia is no exception to that. You feel, and it, the car looks and acts every bit like the Alfa Romeos of past, with that true racing lineage. And you're proud to say that you own an Alfa Romeo, and there's something to be said about when you tell people that you do own this kind of car, uh, and they have a different reaction than they would to say you tell them you drive a BMW. You know, you, you, BMWs, Audis, Mercedes, um, maybe not so much the higher end, but you see a lot of those cars uh, every day on the road. Um, whether, you know, you see just as nam a normal 3 Series, an A5, a GLC, whatever it is, you see all, all of those cars pretty much on a daily basis. So a Mercedes isn't necessarily a rare vehicle unless, you know, you're buying the highest possible one. But even then, you tell people you drive a Mercedes and it can be you drive the GLC or you drive an AMG GTR. So there's a discrepancy there. But when you say that you drive an Alfa Romeo, that's there's something to be said about that. It, it's a unique and rare car. You don't see a lot, especially the Julias, on the road. Um, and it's always, it's a car that people will come up to you and ask you, well, what is that? Or they wanna know about it, or they're just interested, they wanna see it. Because again, it's striking to look at. It's unique, it's rare, it's not something that everybody has. And that's really what drew me to this car was, it's, it's not something that everybody has. It's not something that everybody necessarily knows about, but it's still a phenomenal car and it's different. You know, you, you're gonna stand out in this car from most people. It's a car that when you drive by it, people are gonna turn their heads at uh, and wonder, wow, you know, what is that? And it, 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 there's something to be said about that. You know, not everybody's going to look at a 3 Series BMW and go, oh, wow, you know, it's a Beamer. You know, you see a lot of BMWs per day, but this, not as much. And there's something to be said about driving that piece of history um, and, and a car that draws that kind of attention uh, at this price point, especially. Um, you're, you're, you're not, it's not a Ferrari per se. You're not getting people looking at it like you're driving a, a 488, but at the end of the day, you are driving something that's unique, special, and, uh, and carries a lot of heritage with it, and people do recognize that. So I really think that the name of the Alpha and just driving something that's a little more rare and a little more unique is uh, a feature about this car that you should definitely take into consideration. And I think that's why a lot of people buy these Alpha Romeos. It's just because they're different. And they're not necessarily, I'm not saying that they're necessarily better or worse than its competitors, but they're just different. 
And that is something to me that I do greatly appreciate and I, I, I value in a car. So that's the fifth and final thing that I love about this Julia is the name that comes with it. Alrighty. So that is gonna wrap it up for today's video, guys. I hope you enjoyed these five things or five amazing features that make this Julia uh, worth buying and worth owning. Um, if you did enjoy the video, again, please be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. The more you guys support the channel, the more videos I can give you with this Julia and hopefully more cars similar to it. Uh, I wanna keep growing the channel and I love that you guys keep giving me input on my com in the comment section. Um, I do take it into consideration greatly and I appreciate everybody that does comment on the videos. So thank you for all your support um, and I hope to see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching, peace.